guys, um, welcome to another episode. And this one here is the United States versus Billie Holiday. Um, dropped on Hulu, February 26th. <laughs> Why do you look like that? <laughs> so this movie, um, it was about the uh, jazz singer Billie Holiday um, and pretty much just going over so, okay, so a little background story-ish, okay. Um, so, Billie Holiday is probably known for her song, well, controversial song, Strange Fruit, um, which is pretty much about the lynching of people, Black people. Um, so, numerous occasions, they did not want her to perform this song due to, you know, that crazy time back then with the fizz, everything is negative. Um, but, yeah. So, um, in this movie, I mean, of course, you know, when they bring things to Hollywood, some things are um, more, well, some things are real, some things just add a little bit to make it a little juicy or whatever the case may be. But anyways, um, so, based off this movie, because I don't know anything about Billy Holly other than this movie. Um, then what I research afterwards, but based off this movie, um, she was a very fiery character. Yeah. Yeah. My dad always told me about Billy holiday cause I was one of his favorite artists and told me that she was on a lot of drugs from what he heard. Yeah. Um, so based off the movie, um, they have her drug choice like it was heroin. Um, and there were scenes where she said that she had to be high. I mean, that helped her sometimes, like while on stage performing, things like that. Um, I, I guess, you, you know, that, a lot of people have their vices where they, whether it's alcohol before performance or they're coked up on stage, whatever the case may be. Um, but it, the issue with this situation with her was, uh, for whatever reason, at this time, the federal government's headhunting anybody and everybody. Um, so they were arresting her uh, for possession of drugs. They knew she was an addict. So what's the best thing? Let's use what we know she's going to have against her. Um, but the issue was, I it, it made me so angry because it's like, if she's an addict and you know that she has this condition, why are we treating her like a criminal? Like there was a scene where um, she had got arrested and she thought that they were going to send her to a hospital, treatment hospital, whatever. They ended up sending her to jail. And she they wanted her to pretty much let them know who her supplier was because it's their whole war on drugs little campaign they had going on. And I'm like, so why are we why are we going after like why are we going after the addict if your issue is the supplier? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. They were doing some crazy stuff back then anyway, so there's no telling. They, you heard him like in the towards the beginning of the movie. He was like, our problem in this country is drugs and niggers. I mean, what else do you expect from these people, bro? <laughs> like these kind of people, what else do you expect from these people? Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> I, for real, it's you not laugh. funny. It's not funny, but it's like the, it, it's so crazy. It's like, oh my god! What does you expect from these people? I mean, they was going. They he literally said that his problem <laughs> is drugs and niggers, <laughs> like black people in general. That was his problem in this country. So if he going out to a, a person just because of the color of their skin, that's already wrong. You know what I'm saying, and the fact that towards the end of the sto uh, in the story we seen that uh, the Emmett Till thing, what the Emmett Till bill or something like that has not been passed yet yeah, in 2020. Know. Like that's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, well, um, I mean, you gotta think about the government. So the issue with this movie and well, not necessarily this time or whatever in history um this is why people 
a lot of black people do not trust the government because it's like we have a history of them going over and beyond to frame people to try to set people up to just because they felt like they were going against what they wanted at that time so i've said it before in another episode like it the government wasn't for black people like it's not for your protection it's not not at all not at all and you see they try everything they even try to get old boy to plant something in in her pocket right her people so I mean, and then again, it's alleged, which probably is the case, that um, the narcotics agents, when they went to visit her in the hospital, that they planted heroin on her. And like, this woman is dying. Like, No, she was dead. They arrested her while she was dead. She was, she was in the process of dying. You light this woman up. Like, come on. They put handcuffs on her ankle. Like, she, finna- she just died, and you arrested her when she died. It's like she finna go uh, it's it's ridiculous there, there is to me there's no difference between this and uh judas and the messiah it, yeah, it's I, not it's not much difference you, they planted snitches in her in her organization that helped them you know oh boy you know turning turning against them but by then it was too late she had already been to jail <laughs> And yeah, he got a lot. He locked her up like twice. Hey, come on, man. Because they they knew that they had to get somebody that black people were gonna trust, and that's another black person. They couldn't. They knew they couldn't just roll in there, undercover, and get any information. So it's like they use, you know, people, our people against you know each yeah. other. So how can any black person in their right mind work for? the police the federal government or any entity of the federal government at that at this time well for that check because you keep in mind you still had to make a living again there is no difference between this and the judas and messiah so there's no difference well i don't know so um, but yeah, but in this movie, it pretty much goes over her. Um, it kind of—I don't want to say it justifies why she why she used drugs, but it kind of gives her backstory on um, you know what she was going through as a young person, you know, being raped, you know, at I believe at ten, and her mother works in a brothel and all that. Like, and then you know, we history has that she you know prostituted herself when she was younger. Um, so it, she, this woman went through a lot of stuff and men just continued to come in her life and just, they, they weren't there to help her. They were just pretty much there to, I don't want to say abuse her, but they, they took advantage. They took advantage of someone looking for love, like, or looking for acceptance. And to the point that it was just like, you know, drug, the heroin was what she kind of needed to I don't want to say feel alive, but I mean you don't want to say that, but it just seemed like that's what kept her going. She used like that, her music and that. She used heroin to suppress her feelings. I feel like to suppress all the bad stuff and that was going on in her mind, and, and the focus on the music. I mean, that's the only thing I could really the positive thing I could only really think of that she was doing. And I mean, it's really no telling because she's not allowed to tell her story, but. I don't know. She one of the performances she was singing a song. Man, I can't remember the name of it, but that so I was like, what in the world? It, oh, it was like none of none of nobody's business. There you go. So like one of the lines was something like, if the guy pretty much hits her or whatever, or abuse her. And I'm like, no, honey, no. Like she that just shows that she was just so she was torn. Like she Man, it, it's just horrible. I just felt bad for her. I really felt bad for her because it's like, you know, all she has is her music. The government is trying to shut her up because of this song. They're using her this vice against her that's what's keeping her making music or being able to perform her music is, I don't know. It was it was hard. It was really sad. Are well, you talking about the 1960s really and sad. 70s? 1960s 70s was a whole different world 
You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, well, remember, because she, she's, she's a little bit young. She's, you know, older than that, you know. But um, she was probably 20 something when all this going on. Well, no, I mean, like the time frame, because we're, because she died in 59, if I'm mistaken. So and if I'm not mistaken, she died in her late 40s, she early was 50s. 44. I think she was like 44. Yeah. So, so that means if she died in what, 55? Nine. 59? Mm. But that's what I'm saying. But like, as I'm saying, the time frame, like, there's a lot going on. And, I I just felt bad because her her songs probably were uh, you know women in that situation truth like they're up there how they're gonna survive you know they out here prostituting themselves to men who don't really care they're just there for their pleasure and I I don't know it's just really it's just really sad oh well, you you also got to remember this wasn't that long ago. Like, it's not. That's why I said it. That's why we still got issues with the government. It's like, yo, do you not see what the government is doing? Like, it, it, it reminds me of like NWA. Like, wait, oh, okay, y'all better not sing this song. Like, it's just stuff like that. It's like, dang. Yeah. Like, can we live? Where's our freedom of speech? Mm-mm. I don't know, though. Like, my grandma was born in like 1923, I believe. And she lived through all this. Everything that Billy Holiday was going through with the police and the drugs and all that stuff like that. She lived through that. My grandmother did. So it was it really wasn't that long ago. And the fact that we still have some of the same problems today speaks a true testament to our society. It's sad. It's just sad. But yeah. Um so in the movie they have a guy uh jimmy fletcher who pretty much he starts off the movie like he's like a hardcore fan and this and that um then they have the scene where pretty much he busts into the home like to lock her up right so he's undercover he's undercover fbi whatnot and she in that scene man the look on her face she just felt so betrayed it's like and you know, it's like, really, I, you're, you know, you supposed to be one of us or whatever. I, I mean, you can't trust nobody in that case, <laughs> really. That's that's really what it boils down to. You can't trust anybody. Anybody would turn state's evidence against you, no matter what color they were, you know, because they were doing it for a paycheck. Yeah, because I, in, in, in the case with that guy, based off the movie, you know, he came from a family that had money, this and that or whatever. So it was like him doing this. It, it was like he is kind of like the same thing with Judas. And um, what was it called? Judas. Judas and Black and the- yeah. Just yeah. like that, where the guy in the beginning did not understand what that person was doing. Like, you know, Billie Holiday was do- like that performing that song, Str- um, Strange Fruit, knowing what's going to happen and continue to perform it. Like that was her standing up against the man. Like you know what, you're not gonna tell me, you're not gonna censor me. But um, it, it's like it's the same thing with um, like I said, Judas and Black Messiah. It was like okay, in the beginning, the the villains in a sense didn't understand what was going on. They just looked at themselves. I want to get, I want to look good in FBI, better get another position. That boy, I don't want to go to jail. And then once they started to this quote unquote undercover stuff, they started to realize, you know what? These people aren't that bad. They're not this these big bad guys that the you know the feds are making them seem like. Yeah. But like you said, people do anything for a paycheck. And the, the fact that she ran up on a family whose mother had been murdered, like hung from a tree, and the father was sitting there hugging the, the, the dead body. And while the kid's sitting there crying, and oh boy, I forgot his name. He actually seen that. I, I guess that's why he flipped late, uh, later on. Well, did so okay. So that scene, I thought that was just like a like a flashback. I don't know if it actually happened. No, it seemed like it seemed, I, I think that was just a flashback because, like, like I said, Strange Fruit is about lynching. Because you know, she like, have you ever seen anybody lynch? So I'm figuring, you know just Jimmy Fletcher guy, if he came for money, I'm sure he went down in the South witnessing this kind of stuff. So 
it was more like, hey, you take a step, step back a little bit, go walk, take a walk in my shoes. And then now you'll see why I do what I do or why I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, it I guess you could say uh, you thought it was at uh, it was a flashback because it was after a flashback, but it it really wasn't. It wasn't a flashback. They, he, they really seen that from what they portrayed in the movie. I didn't get that. But. I mean, they asked from what I was seeing, they actually seen people hang from a tree and do all that stuff like that. So it was just sad, man. That's it. So, so, um, oh man, we have. <laughs> so there was a scene. So this is what I want to ask you about. So there was a scene where um, uh, Billy Holiday and um, Bankhead they're trying to go into the elevator to go up to the rooms, and the black, um, I don't know, elevator guy. I don't know what you would call him. Hmm. He was standing there, whatever, and he was like, yo, I can't let you up here. You know, you want to take the service elevator. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to lose my job type stuff. And he was like, dead for real, that he was not going to let her up there. So how do you feel about that? Do you feel like he was, was he right, justified, right, wrong in that situation? Well, it seemed like the man was just trying to keep his job, so. <sighs> it's keep hard his to... job, even if it was like morally wrong like okay why she can't get in the elevator with her friend well you know why they can't get in well i, I know but i'm just saying so you think he was right would you have done it at the time probably i probably would have did the same thing but i probably would have said some different things to her and probably would have been a little nicer about it but yeah what do you mean nicer i mean he said it nice he could no i don't think he did I don't think it did. He could have been a little bit nicer. It's like you know. maybe she tried to run, walk past him because he was nice. She tried to walk. She he was he he was trying to be you know. Like he nice. could, he could have said, you know what we're going through. You know what uh, what happens around here, and I cannot give up my job just to let you on this elevator. That's pretty much what he said. That's he said pre- that. That's pretty much what he said, but that's not what he actually said. That is what he said. That's almost literally what he said. <laughs> we watching two different movies. No, nah, we watching the same movie. <laughs> we watching the same movie, but I, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like he could have said a little nicer, but yeah, I think I, I still think he did the right thing. He, he had to. He had no choice. He had a choice. He could let it get up there. No, I, I mean that choice became a consequence, but he had a choice. Yeah, exactly. Every choice comes with a damn consequence, and uh, he if he didn't want to see those damn consequences, <laughs> he, shit, he better not let her ass on that elevator. Oh. And I mean, it was rough times back then. I mean, what else he's supposed to do? It was rough times. Like he had no other choice. I see. He ain't had no other choice, so he had to do what he had to do. Hey, he didn't. He didn't snitch on her. He didn't do nothing. He just said you can't get on his elevator. So I don't see what he did as actually that bad. But just a man hmm. doing his job. Just a man doing the damn job, really. All right. So Miss Billy Holiday, um, she had three husbands. So um, in the movie, it does you know show her with each relationship, um, and. Man, all three of these men were so horrible to her. They were really horrible to her. You know, snitching on her, beating on her, whatever it was, you know, it, it was just turned out bad for her in every turn of the corner with every relationship that she was in. So, but I mean, it was some abuse going back and forth, because like, especially with the last guy, like they were just she hitting him, he hitting her, and it was like, dang, man. Wait, the last guy that you talking about, the guy she was. Married well, to? Yeah, well, I'll, matter of fact, if all every guy she slapped her, every guy put hands on her, put it that much. But yeah, but the last guy, it was like because they were doing like the tour, um, the U.S. tour, and then they went to Europe and all that. Um, but yeah, they were fighting. I don't think you realize how common slapping females was back then. <laughs> like that was so, it, it was so common. It was okay. so common. Dudes were slapping females all the time but that for does no not, reason. That does not make it right, though. I ain't said to make it right. I ain't said to make it right. I did not say that. I was just saying 
it was a <laughs> a frequent occurrence to do slapping females. I'm not speaking up for nobody or nothing like that, but it was just a frequent occurrence back then. I mean, what else you gonna do? So she okay, so she's supposed to just just take it. Like, ah, everybody else doing it, so I guess. No, I'm not saying she just take it either. She should have canceled them niggas, but well, I'm I, in it, her situation, what else she supposed to do? It was the drugs, honestly. That's what all that abuse. You think she was getting slapped up because because uh, of yes, the drugs? Yeah, she high. They high. Yes, I can see that. I can see them fighting over some crazy stuff, or mm. they trying to. They you know they need to get high and they wait in whatever case may be and they getting all agitated. Yes, I can see that. I can see the drug probably led to probably a lot of that domestic violence. Um. <sighs> That's hard. Well, no, because okay, there was there was based off the movie, there was one scene where um she had stole her husband money. Mm -hmm. And he found out because she was like it was her money, you know, saying he, you know, she she's the one performing, whatever the case may be, and he laid hands on her. Yep. So but she used that money to get high with. So I would say most of that probably was due to that due to the drugs. <sighs> That she used the money, or no, that she just, just just being on drugs led to probably a lot of that domestic violence back and forth. Okay. No, I mean, I don't care how much drugs you on. You don't want somebody laying hands on you like that. Would you exactly? But I'm saying. You don't. Saying. I mean, you really, you really don't. You don't want people laying hands on you like that. It's ridiculous. Dude, that's what I said. You you don't. So I don't I you can't blame the drug. No, you blaming the drugs. The, I don't blame the drugs. So I blame I say it's her. So she caused the guys to put hands on her. No, she did not cause the guys to hands. So what are you saying? She continuously stayed in that situation. She was married by three choice. times and all three men did it. But she stayed in that situation by choice. That's what I'm saying. It was choice to stay there and let these guys continue, continue to put. Once left. they put hands on, on on you one time, like why are you going back? Why are you continuously doing well, this? Well, based off of you, it was a, it was a common thing. It, it was a common thing. So then, would she have seen anything wrong? It was common. I guess that's why she stayed. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. That's why she stayed because she she ain't seen dudes do that all the time. So she didn't see nobody like. No real problem with it, I guess. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, because you all over the place with this one right here, bro. I, I don't know. You, I don't know. She <laughs> she she sat there and let dudes put hands on her. So I, I see that as her choice. And that's what they did back then. So I guess she found that acceptable. That's all I'm saying. That, she found it, she kind of I felt like she found that acceptable, kind of. Hey. It was the drugs with them on the drugs she on the drugs that's what it was that caused that back and forth i don't i can't blame the drugs that's what i'm saying i can't blame the drugs so, i blame her i blame her because she let that happen no matter what, what kind of you drugs blame her? you can't so you gonna bring the victim and not the man who's doing it but i blame her for staying the story was about her okay. so uh, correct however so you're blaming the victim the reason why she kept getting beat up is because she decided on staying even though she was married three separate times, so eventually she had to leave. No, she wasn't the reason why she got beat up. She okay, was a re she was the reason why she kept getting beat up. That makes sense. It does not make sense at all, bro. So, at all. so once the dude put his hands on you one time, he was going to continue to do it. Or maybe it's a one time. Maybe it's a one off. It ain't no one off. It's no such thing. But if you're, but you said that it was common, so wouldn't that mean that she found it acceptable? But so why leave the man then if every other man gonna do the same thing? So then what you say don't make sense. It's the drugs. The drugs was the reason why there was so much domestic well, violence. That, that doesn't mean every man gonna do the same thing though. Well, that's what you said. It's common. It is very common. But that don't mean every man does it either. It was the drugs, bro. The drugs is what contributed to that domestic violence both ways. All right, I guess we're gonna agree to disagree here. <laughs> And I can't blame drugs. If a man puts his hands on you one time, one single time, mm -hmm. he is going to do it again. Period. He's 
he's going to do it again. And if you stay and he continuously put his hands on you, that is nobody else's fault but yours. Because he, you, if he wasn't so the there, man can't take, so why, why the man? Why is it not his fault? He is always his fault. But if he keep putting his hands on you and you don't leave, that it becomes your fault. So why are we blaming the victim? Why is it her fault? Why are we blaming the victim? Because she stayed, and she continuously messed so, around with this. So you she, know how how easy it was to go somebody back then. So she is. So she is the the fault for the situation. Not the man that's putting his hands on her. But she is. They both. Well, he is always. The man is always. If he put his hands on a female, he's he's all always a weak man. But if it happens a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, then she is to blame because she should have left. She should have ghosted him. This is 1960. You could disappear off the face of the earth. No, no, no. But that how like she. They in New York, you know what I'm saying? They they in her, they got the same circuit of friends. She can't just disappear. She not where she gonna go? She gonna go to the South with all this crazy stuff happening? But like you gotta think of the time zone, the time the time frame. Like she gonna where's she going? Where's she gonna go? Unless like, she going to Chicago, where's she going? So she gonna up and leave all her stuff for a man? Well, from from the looks of the movie, she really didn't actually. Every time we saw her, she was in either in a club or a hotel, exactly, or courtroom. So where was her home? She had a circuit of where she would perform and do things like she could like when they took her cabaret car, she couldn't perform in New York. She was doing Philly or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So she why would she leave that? It's because of, because of a man. Let a man chase her away from her dreams. A man, how is a man <laughs> going to chase her away from her dreams? You just said she didn't leave. All right, whatever. Like, stop <laughs> communicating with her. Talk to, whatever. Buddy. Like, get secure. Tell her this motherfucker show up, whoop his ass and kick him out of the club. Lesson, blessing, and curse. Uh, it's a lesson because I I didn't know all this stuff about Billy Holiday. My dad told me a lot about her, but and he had pictures hanging over Billy Holiday, but I didn't know all this stuff actually happened. All I knew was about she was an amazing singer, songwriter, and and the drugs. But I didn't know she was she went through all this stuff like that. So it was a lesson. It was also a good movie though. Yeah. Um it's a two hour movie, but it was I watched it twice today, so <laughs> so but yeah, it I mean it's it's, it's something is it's easy to sit through. So you know you gotta worry about it. It's easy to sit through. Um but yeah, the movie is is def I would give it a lesson, um, rating lesson. Um and it does give you a little bit more information about her. And like I said, it, it made me definitely feel sorry for her. Like I definitely felt bad. It's like you know, because some people, they just want to put in the drugs. And it's like, okay, but why did she start these drugs? Why was she using these drugs? And having that backstory, you know, you feel a little bit of empathy towards her. You know, like, okay. But, yeah. Well, on to next week, then. Y'all check us out on Spotify, Twinkleberry, and uh, Twinkle, Twinkle Movie Club. Check us out on YouTube with Twinkle Movie Club. Uh, like, comment, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. We are out here in these streets. Um, come holler at us at anywhere that you can find podcasts. So, yeah, just hit us up. Send us some emails, movie suggestions. We always like the suggestions. So, and we'll be right back at y'all next week. All right. Thanks, guys, for your support. Continue to listen, and thanks. Later.